Vinyl community. Happy Friday. Ah, oh, made it. How's everybody doing? I've just just finished work. Just had a shower. About to open my first beer of the weekend. It's uh, a really great feeling when you know you got nothing really to do apart from uh, spin some records and drink a beer. Um, I just sort of jump on and do something a bit more casual and talk about the VCLT that Dave sent to me and um, some thoughts on a record and what I'm up to this weekend. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, just feeling like being in front of the camera and having a chat. So uh, cheers to everybody. I'm drinking a um, Yeasty Boys Cloud Buster. Oh, the sun's really shining, so you probably can't even see that. Um, yeah, it's a craft beer, um, based around sort of Kate Bush, I suppose. Um, there's lyrics to the, the track, uh, cloud busting here. Every time it rains, one of these in your hand is like the sun coming out. You just know that something good is going to happen. So if you know that track, you know that those lyrics are sort of adapted from that. Yeah, this is a really, really fresh, um, sort of clean beer. It does sound like something's punching through. It's really good for a hot day like today. Um, really summery. I say I say it's hot here. It's sort of different. Like it only gets to sort of like twenty five degrees. Oh Jesus! It only gets to like twenty five degrees here, whereas in Melbourne it was more like forty degrees. But it's a lot more humid and a lot more sticky. Um, and it's like, it's hot in a different way. I don't really know how to describe it. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so Yeasty Boys from Dunedin, I'm pretty sure. Or they in Invercargill, which is the most southern town in New Zealand at the bottom of the South Island. Cheers, VC. Yeah, New Zealand has a really big sort of craft beer scene. Like, I know most cities have a, a craft beer scene and lots of small microbreweries and stuff, but here it's it's so different that it's actually like the mainstream. I don't know how to describe it. Like, you, Every bar, even like a more of like a, a standard uh, commercial bar or every supermarket, you go to a liquor store, it's all sort of craft beers and small breweries and like your bigger names like your Heinekens and your Coronas and stuff, you know, they hardly sell it. If they sell it, it's in small volumes or it's right at the back, you know, it's really interesting or maybe, I don't know, I, I just seem to notice this a lot more, but it seems like craft beer is almost more mainstream here, which is really cool because it encourages, you know, millions of different types of beer and you can try a lot of different things and um because there's so much competition prices are, are quite low or very decent you know so wow i'm talking a lot today <laughs> you can tell it's friday anyway yeah so my girlfriend's away for the weekend um my plan tonight is to cook myself a really good meal and um, spend some records really have a few beers which is going to be great um Actually, for anyone that's noticed, oh. yes, very similar to the times uh, we live in, <laughs> 1984. Anyway, um, yeah, my girlfriend's like a really keen cook. I'm really talking a lot. <laughs> um, and she's got a lot of really good cookbooks, and uh, she picked this up, the Anthony Bourdain cookbook, The American Chef. Um, this is a, a book that he... If you're not into food or anything like that, you can probably skip forward. In fact, if you're at this point, I apologize because nothing, no records have been shown. Um, yeah, she's, she's really into cookbooks and cooking. She has a massive collection of really amazing cookbooks. The Salvador Dali cookbook is up here, actually, just behind me. This is obviously just part of it. Um, most of it's up in Auckland um, where our stuff's in storage still. But yeah, th this is one she bought recently. and. It's what he cooks for his seven-year-old daughter, and if she likes it, it goes in the recipe book, which is really, really interesting. Like, there's some really good stuff in here, and uh, amazing photography. Anyway, I'm cooking tonight. You know, I'm really looking forward to just cooking some food, having a beer, no rush, no stress. You know, like, I really enjoy cooking when I don't have the rush of it now. Where is this recipe? And why are you sitting here watching me flip through a cookbook talking about what I'm going to eat tonight? Maybe this video wasn't such a good idea after all. Here it is. Um, Look at that. 
that's what I'm making apparently. I've made it before and it's really good, but it's um, it's called Korean Army Stew. It's sort of it's this really weird mix of American food and Korean food in in like a a big hearty tasty thing. Shiitake mushrooms, anchovies, kombu, kimchi, spam, pork, hot dogs, soy sauce, red peppers, ramen noodles. It sounds pretty unhealthy now. Look at it. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I suppose I should talk about records now. I'm going to a record fair tomorrow, which is really exciting. Um, first one, first big one of the year. But it's, it's my first one in Wellington as well. So um, I've managed to sort of allocate two thirds of my budget already to two records. A friend has offered me two really, really good deals on um, two records I really want. So I'm that's it's kind of. I'm kind of pre-spending it, which is kind of like it takes away a bit of the mysteriousness of what you're going to find, but he's going to be there and the deals I can't pass up on. So I don't know. Yeah, in a way I'm kind of like, oh, well, that's most of my budget gone. But I'm also really happy that I'm getting these two records. Mm. Yeah, so my girlfriend's away. She's going to go pick up some records for me in Auckland. Um, I told her just to grab whatever you don't really look, just pick whatever. So she's going to come back with a handful of records that are up in storage, which is kind of exciting. So we'll see what she comes back with. <laughs> just before I was playing these two records here, we will start to the weekend. Sonny Chirac, Black Woman on Vortex. Such a powerful, spiritual, sort of like bluesy, not bluesy, folky, raggedy, free jazz. It's so good, so unique. Um, this one really hit me when I finished work. It's just beautiful. And um, actually, my neighbors would have thought I had another woman in the house <laughs> when, they, when they heard this, because if you know this record, you'll know what I'm talking about. Just the, the sound from, um, who's, this, who's the singer on here? Is it his wife, Linda Schrock? I feel like it might be. Linda Schrock, yeah. His, 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 I assume it's his wife um, doing the vocals, which is a beautiful display of um, a black female vocal, I guess. It's, it's amazing. And, and you look, listen to this for a lineup. How good is this? Sonny Chirac, Dave Burrell, Norris Jones, Milford Graves, Linda Chirac. Um, yeah, great. Really cool. This is a highly recommended record if you don't have it. There's a Four Men with Beard um, pressing available. But yeah, this is a, an original press on Vortex. This was something that I bought of Discogs, maybe 18, look at that light, isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? 18 months ago, quite expensive, but it was a big want list item. Magnificent, spiritual, folky, bluesy, free jazz. I don't know, it's very unique. And then, and then I put this on, um, just to open up the ears a bit. This is a Liberty Blue Note pressing, a, a um, high watermark in, in free jazz and a very early improvisational freak out thing from Blue Note, which is really cool. This is a, a brilliant album. I got this really cheaply um, about three or four years ago. Massive, massive record. Anyway. Actually, who's on that? You know, I often put records on, I get halfway through and I think, oh, who's playing this record? It's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Actually, this, this lineup, is almost even better than that lineup. Um, Jimmy Lyons, Eddie Gale, Ken McIntyre, Henry Grimes, Alan Silver, Andrew Surreal, Cecil Taylor. Listen to that. Eddie Gale, Jimmy Lyons, Ken McIntyre, Cecil Taylor, Henry Grimes, Alan Silver, Andrew Surreal. If you know those guys, you'll understand why this record is, is so good. Anyway, um, so yeah, I got, got some VCL TV um, earlier in the week. Uh, look, looking back on that, I probably like I probably wasn't very articulate in what I was saying, or I was too overwhelmed trying to figure out what had been sent to me. Um, so again, thank you so much, Dave. Four records that I don't have, and three of them, you know, I've never heard before. So super happy. I'll uh, I'll start with this one. Um, I later realized this was a sort of a Brazilian sounding record. Brazilian Latin sounding record with sort of touches of soul and disco, but it recorded um, by mainly Germans in Germany. Um, 
yeah, Sonho Negro Sinto. Yeah, has has touches of like funky soul, um, Brazilian, Latin. I mean, the track to check out is definitely the first track, Man on the Banks. Yeah, uh, really cool, really interesting. And yeah, nothing I never heard before, so look at that label. Thank you, Dave. Um, yeah, everything but the girl. So what this is is um, 10 years after um, Temperamental and Walking, I think it was after Walking Reader came out, um, they released this, which is uh, 10 years of remixes, which is uh, remixes that have come out since that album, um, Walking Wounded. And um, I should, what I was trying to say in the previous video was I, used to, I listened to this remix. The whole album is on Spotify, but only ever came out on CD. I didn't realize that this this particular you know thing came out on vinyl. This is uh, three of the tracks from that. Um, this is like a promo copy, and it's uh, yeah yeah three of the best tracks really. Wrong. Oh, before today is a really good track. It's not on here though. Missing and Five Fathoms. So really great to have this um, something just to turn on and crank up. And yeah, Tracy Thorne. What can I say? Thank you for this. This is really cool. Yeah, check out the whole CD. It's just called yeah, Adapt or Die 10 Years of Remix. It's by Everything But The Girl. This one, not what I was expecting at all. I thought it was going to be like a, a funk, uh, sorry, a folk album or something like that, like an Irish folk, but I later found out it was a Welsh funk record, um, like on a private press label. Um, I don't really know about this record. It didn't, it didn't really hit me. Maybe I'm just sort of taken aback by it, just by the sound of it. It's definitely unique. Can't say I love it, but um, <laughs> it's definitely something I've never heard before and something I probably would never never have heard before if I didn't get it on VCLT. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> this one this one is, uh, I listened to it again this morning, and it's really grown on me. I've had it on a few times during the week. Um, yeah, uh, a really interesting mix of styles. There's one track that I really don't like. Uh, and the soundtracks that I really like. There's actually a Zimbabwean reggae thing, which is like the last track on here, which is really cool. Um, actually, I'm going to put that on because I quite like that. This is really cool. I, I, a lot of it's it's not really... I, I was imagining it to be more like um, Zamrock or like, you know, fuzzy African guitars and stuff like that, but it's actually more traditional or more rootsy, I suppose. Um, yeah. This, this is the first time I heard it. It didn't grab me, and then yeah, I've had listened to it twice more further this week, and it's definitely something I really appreciate. Oh, look at those white legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Thirteen minutes already. Yeah, last week, last week here we had the uh, Newtown Fair or Newtown Festival, which is sort of a comes. It's a festival. It's on every year in Wellington, and it's uh, the biggest sort of street fair in New Zealand. There's um, food and gifts, and uh, there's about eight stages, all with local bands ranging from like I don't know, punk to metal to Afro. Caribbean music and lots of really cool Latin music and local indie bands and stuff like that. Like really nice day out, completely free. Um, and I know that um, yeah, Graham Jeffries. I'm gonna stop, stop, talk, stop talking about this band, but from uh, this kind of punishment is is their selling stuff. So it's really cool to go back and have a chat to him. Um, and, and I got a record off him, which I'm really excited about. That I hadn't heard before. Um, he he told me that. Um, this kind of punishment superior vibe is going to release the next few records, which is really good for him and really, really massive. Um, you know, it's just, it's just cool that he's, he's finally going to reach a wider audience, you know, because superior vibe, as you know, are an amazing label and 
yeah, so look out for that. That's going to really bring their name into the wider world, I suppose, and into the VC. Anyway, um, we started talking about uh, this heat, and he was saying, oh, you know, have you heard this record here? Um, it's, it's really good. I was like, no, I haven't. I obviously knew Charles Haywood is the drummer from this heat. He's like, yeah, but this is really, I highly recommend this record. Um, it's his first solo album. Um, after, it's his first solo album. It's his first album after um, Campbell Now. And he described it to me as basically being halfway between Campbell Now and this heat. And it's definitely spot on. Like, I, I listened to this through about three or four times. And I'm at that stage where I... I really like it. Like, you know when you're first in love with a record and you first hear it and you're not 100% familiar with it, but you're just really digging it? Like, I really, I'm at that point with this record. It's, it's really beautiful. It's sort of a, like, avant-garde, uh, pop rock record, bits of, like, new wave, but then there's, like, like, noisy bits and some of the songs just drift off into noise and there's this one drum solo in here that's, like, the most like post-punk drum solo, which sounds stupid, if you've ever heard, it's so robotic and mechanical and yeah, and, and just, just his voice, yeah, it's just really, words can't describe it, I'll put a bit on. It's a dog that looks like a shark. There you go. Yeah, I, I love this record, I could like really highly recommend it, it's, it's, it's really nice to get a record that you don't know and fall in love with it. I don't know, like, it's quite easy to buy records that you are on your want list. Um, you know, like, to, to make a big purchase, but then to go, go out to a, a fair and someone recommends your record, you buy it and you're blown away by it, you know, it's such a great feeling. But yeah, anyway. And that's all, really. I've just talked a lot and not shown much, but that's where I'm at. Um, Hope you guys have a really good weekend. I'll uh, just leave this playing in the background for a bit because it's re really, really cool. Cheers, VC. Happy Friday.